Hello, everyone. I'll be giving a presentation on problems faced by a recommendation service that uh, received uh, two billion uh, requests per a day. They are countermeasures. And my name is Watanabe, and I am from the uh, CRS uh, development team, the Line Development Center 4. And I've been talking about that the service side uh, development and uh, the service and called the Smart Channel, which is being uh, developed by our team. And I'll be discussing about um, these kind of agenda. And then there has been uh, many troubles while um, it is operated. And uh, I would like to discuss about the troubles, which is probably it would interest you and in how we have uh, solved them. And then um, what we have learned, and that is going to be covered at the very end. Thank you. And a smart channel has a service in the line applications, and uh, we open the recommendation in several places. And the left hand side, and this is a chat tab, and here at the uh, the top, and the recommendations and the advertisements in this area. And then also right side is a home tab, and which is a page with a list of the friends and the links to the line service. And at the bottom of the screen here, in this area, there is a recommendations for multiple services are displayed. It looks like uh, there is only one uh, level and on the screen, but uh, when you go uh, to the bottom and up to the three levels. Are displayed. The concept of this service is to provide a variety of the services, including the line, and we gather contents uh, recommendations to our users. And using machine learning logic, and and the idea is to display the most appropriate contents at the most appropriate time. And on March first, the 2021, the uh, line merged with the Azit Holdings, in which owns Yahoo Japan. And then uh, uh, before and then after, uh, I have been using the Yahoo with it. So after the merger, I went to them and talked to them and uh, for the collaborations, and they have provided us with some contents. And for example, whether if I need an umbrella today, or they, uh, my uh, laundry can be dry today, or when the time comes and fully this uh, puzzle information can be displayed, and please take a look at it. And at the very end, and I will help provide you some indications for this service. And uh, there's a chat tab and a home tab, and the two billions of the requests that we receive per a day. And in the line services, this is quite big ones. And this service currently it serves Japan and Thailand and Taiwan, and uh, uh, 167 millions of people that we are providing the contents. And the numbers of the recommended content is about uh, 60 million contents per day. Now, uh, what kind of the, uh, the things should we design in the initial design uh, phase of the system? Let's talk about it. And uh, this is a uh, behavior of the flow. And a uh, smart channel code system uh, is called the CRS. And this uh, sends uh, uh, the for the contents recommender service. And the system itself uh, does not have uh, its own contents. As introduced in the concept, it uh, collects uh, uh, lots of the uh, contents to recommend from the service that uh, works with. And at the timing, when the user opens the line application, and we select the most appropriate one to return uh, to the users, especially the chat tab. And it's pretty small uh, display and frame. And therefore, only one uh, content can be at that time. And so uh, um, it is like a returning the one content from the, a lot of uh, contents. And that's not the end. And uh, uh, whether the uh, user actually uh, um, seeing that the contents and also uh, whether it clicked or not. And then uh, events are collected by event talker and uh, uh, the uh, log to the learning uh, the worker. And then when it is uh, used uh, for the, uh, the next uh, selection of the contents. And then I recommend the contents. Um, it's uh, collected with various services and selecting the best contents to the, uh, at the time for the among the many recommended ones and uh, and the learn it will learn the result of the contents recommendations applied to the next content uh, selections. The system is going to be repeatedly run and it will be smarter and smarter. And today's theme is going to be the high traffic web service uh, the, the designs and the trouble. And that is a theme. And therefore, in terms of the detailed mechanism of the recommendation of machine learning, I don't talk about it. But in uh, 2019, and at the line developer day, I have made a presentation. If you're interested, then please take a look at that the video and transcript is available. And now, from here, I would like to talk about what kind of the architecture we considered when building the system. And we created this system in uh, 2018, and the line is already used by many users. And the first uh, the thing we were concerned about was um, how to uh, estimate line traffic. And since this service provided uh, contents to uh, chat tab, which is central uh, functions, and the line's uh, big traffic uh, uh, peak is going to be at New Year's, and it was pretty famous. And you have probably, probably sent the green greetings uh, with the lines. 
and then in Japan that time zones and uh, uh, the uh, January 1st and from the zero uh, hours and that is going to be the peak in Japan and then there's no uh, request numbers because it's applications. But uh, in the 2018, the peak traffic was approximately 250,000 requests per sec. And this is a quite big number. And of course, that, that we thought um, we would be able to build the system if it, we handled it correctly. However, we will not be, we cannot, because that web server is going to be probably needed for a hundred of them uh, for the first estimate. And we have an analysis whether if we want to uh, uh, do that, the recommendation only uh, displayed recommendation in the case, it's not necessary to retrieve the contents and for each request, and if you catch that the client side, and we'll be able to reduce down the uh, request numbers. And then actually, we tried to do this, and uh, from the look, and uh, we have tried uh, simulating this, and uh, if you uh, do this, and the request per second uh, estimates can be done in this way. No uh, uh, cash is used in the case of 250,000. In the case of the 60 seconds, uh, 148,000, uh, and 182nd, uh, in the case of uh, 12, uh, uh, 121,000 and for three minutes and five minutes and the 10 minutes and you see uh, the figures uh, in this way. And this is pretty effective. And therefore, uh, we decided to build the system with a target of the uh, uh, 71,000 TTL, 600 sounds seconds, uh, which is a maximum peak to traffic guaranteed by the system. However, at the beginning of the services, and the contents of volume was uh, very small. And therefore, uh, this uh, TTL was uh, starting at the uh, one hour, longer one, and the uh, contents increased. And uh, we, we repeated that the A-B test, and we selected the most appropriate ones. And we have changed the configurations. And uh, when the traffic uh, bigger's compared to the uh, peak in the new years, and at that time, this uh, catch timing can be longer. And then we'll be able to control that uh, traffic. That's what we have found. And now, uh, TDL has 600. The client cache was used and uh, 71,000 uh, RPS. And this kind of architecture is needed, which we have found. And I have uh, talked about in the flow section. CRS itself uh, has no uh, contents. And then we had to get that from the these services. However, uh, with the cache and the 70,000 RPS, and this figure is a uh, quite big uh, traffic. and. Uh, it's not very impractical to inquire about this traffic and synchronously and with the service that provides the contents and for safety of the service. And we wanted to separate this traffic. And for this, and the service itself must have the, uh, some kind of uh, database and then uh, asynchronous from the service. So it is going to be the back process and get the uh, 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 information. And the database is only need to store the contents uh, 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 temporarily, so consistency is not important, and the poor on memory, and then also uh, the key value store, and uh, uh, we are going to use that the the cluster uh, metric, and then now we have decided the configuration of the database. So we are going to talk about the data monitoring, and then recommend uh, the contents have to be mapped for each users, and the contents itself for per. Uh, person, and there's a multiple contents may exist. And so the same contents may be recommended to the others. And there's such a possibility. And the last one is going to be very important. And the user and then also the contents mapping is going to be a 100, uh, uh, 107, uh, uh, the numbers. And this number is quite big. And therefore, uh, we have to be able to do something about it. And the users and contents mapping and uh, needs to be changed, and normalization and regularization that we have tried, and for the users, and what kind of contents are available, and only the uh, item ID that is going to be listed. And then uh, uh, contents uh, information and that is going to be not uh, duplicated. And therefore, we will be able to reduce that the contents part, uh, the volumes. And then uh, users and item ID mapping. And we call it like targeting. And then contents is self data. Uh, you call it like information. And then uh, there's other, uh, the, um, uh, the data structure, but the main one is going to be the targeting and information. And that will come back several times later on. So please remember that. So now, as a final part of data modeling, let's consider the radius clusters distribution mechanism. Let's take the example of the targeting, which is likely to have a large amount of data. Well, this cluster mode is the mode to be used to use a radius in a distributed environment. There are multiple nodes in one radius cluster like this. Let's look at the simple three node case. Radius is used as a key value store, so there is a key and a value. The radius cluster uses this key 
to calculate the hash value and determine the node to store the data. However, the CRS service is structured to receive data from various services. The difficulty here is that the recommendation generation is timed differently for each service. There may be cases where multiple services update their recommendations at the same time, or a single service may generate a large number of recommendations. If we put all of this data on one key, we may have a hard time with the exclusion control, or under there may be cases where one key contains a large amount of data. This may be a bit tricky to handle. So therefore, uh, the, in addition to the user ID, a service name is included in the key to indicate which sub service is targeted. So this means a key is assigned to each service for each user. This means that for one user, there is a key for each service. Here's a little problem. The Redis cluster uses the key to determine the node. The data over here could be stored on a different node. If possible, we'd like to keep them on a single node. In fact, Redis has a mechanism to meet this need. You can specify the part of the key to be used for distribution in a bracket like this. So this way, the keys are written to the same node. So user A only needs to look at look node one when leading targeted radius. Of course, it is if it is a different user, uh, it is expected to be written to a different node and distributed. So data modeling. It's summary. The targeting and information data structure, each of which is stored in a separate Redis cluster. Targeting Redis defines the mapping of IDs of content recommended to users and is stored in a distributed manner by user. The information Redis stores the actual contents of the item IDs maps by the targeting. Specifically, it stores the text URL of the image, URL of the landing page after click, and so on. And since this content is somewhat large, it is stored in a distributed manner by item ID so that it is equally distributed. In fact, there is a little pitfall here, which will be introduced in the next trouble section. Now that the data modeling is complete, so let's briefly define the content delivery flow. When a user opens a line, we retrieve the candidate contents to be recommended to that user from targeted radius. Next, we retrieve the actual contents of the item ID specified in the targeting from the information radius. Now the candidate contents to be displayed are determined. Finally, if there are multiple candidate contents, the system ranks them by analogy with the user's taste and interest and returns the top contents. This is how we implemented the system. Now that we had actually built the system and uh, ready to release it, we took several safety measures to ensure that the service would be able to handle the heavy traffic that was expected. The first step was performance testing. We wanted to know the maximum number of the access per second by implemented system, especially the web service. Therefore, we tested the performance of the system on the scenario base. In this case, we tested using a batch uh, gutling. Gatling. Uh, here are the results. The top row shows the number of concurrent requests, and the second row, the response time is slowed down uh, considerably when the RPS exceeds 3,100. The response time is exceeds one second at 3,150. The response time is 99% uh, uh, response and reduced to one second at uh, 3150. To be on the safe side, we define the traffic limit at 3000 RPS by unit. And so uh, we have a rough idea what we want to do, but if we release it to all users, there may be an unforeseen problem. So therefore, this is, uh, we, used, uh, we decided to do the gradual rollout. And uh, we started with a small release, say 1% or 5% or you, all the users. And this function is used not only for initial release, but also when adding a new collaborative services. And the last is the A-B test, which is sometimes combined with the gradual rollout. Uh, whenever we make changes, we always do an A-B test. Whenever we change the behavior of the system, we always make a hypothesis and ask ourselves if it is working correct. And so for the first two years, that we, we didn't have uh, any issues. 
、uh, for two years, but then after that, we started to see the troubles. And so we have a tons of、uh, troubles that we want to introduce, but、uh, we're going to pick up some for the sake of time. So the first issue is the,、uh, this part the、uh, contents information extraction from information radius. So what happened is like about、uh, two years ago, the response times was worsened, and then So it was like a, the graph chart before it slowed down. The yellow、uh, line is a 99% respond,、uh, percentile response time. And、uh, so this is just、uh, overlaid, not the accumulation. 99.9 percentile. So 50 milliseconds. But、uh, before one month, then that,、uh, on the Uh, December 1st, response times、uh, went down significantly. Even if we disclose this、um, dipping,、uh, it's very slow. And so we didn't add any special processes to slow down the response, so we started the investigation. So we look at the different metrics, and then、uh, the, we found that、uh, there was a trouble with the information radius that response time by a、uh, radius cluster node varies. And so the data stored in the information radius is in a fixed format. And so, therefore, the number of keys uh, uh, per, by node are、uh, even. So, therefore, that、uh, we check the MGET number, number of the MGET commands by,、uh, executed by node, but、uh, it varies. And,、uh, They are up and down, but the,、uh, it looks like the, it takes time with the large number of MGET executions. So, what happened? So,、uh, you may think that we had、uh, no idea, but we had、uh, one thing that、uh, we know that the, you know, the, because of the recommendation logic、uh, improvement and the service close, that we increased the number of the contents that. Can be recommended to the user significantly as of the November 1st, that the 8.3 recommendation per user, but the, as of the December 5th, the average 20.5 recommendation per user. s And it's nice as a service, but then it could be a bottleneck. It's, it's highly likely that it is a bo- bottleneck. And so that the, we、uh, decided to、uh, set a fi- hypothesis what kind of、uh, impact that the increase of the targeting has. So that first, Uh, let's simply t- state that、uh, there are a few items in that targeting A and B, and the fetch information process uses the item ID obtained, obtained in the targeting to obtain information. In radius, item information is stored in multiple nodes like this. And in this project, we use a library called Letters as a client to access radius. Letters has an MGET command、uh, that supports cluster mode. And get is a command that allows you to specify multiple keys and retrieve the values with a single request. And if it is used in a cluster mode, let us、uh, will. Let us determine that which node to query from the specified key and obtain the keys to query the same node altogether. In this example, items A and B are on the same node, so MGET queries node one only once. Uh, what if there is an item F in targeting? In this case, A and B query node one and F queries node three, respectively. In other words, two queries are made. What about the case where there are keys for all items? In this case, all nodes must be queried. In other words, as a result of the increase in targeting, it is necessary to access a large number of nodes, and the effect of the distribution is diminished. That's what we thought. So let's check. So、uh, we added the metrics and then that the. So we checked the,、uh, the number of the times that command has been executed inside the letters. So we. Y is an execution time and X is a time. So、uh, this is also overlaid. And so we look at the、uh, radius in that execution time change. And so from bottom, number of the targeting is 1 to 9, 10 to 19, and 20 to 29, 30 to 39, and over 40. So depending on the number of the targeting, the execution times get longer and longer. And we also look at The number of the times the command has been executed inside letters. The distribution is as follows.、Uh, the number of the targeted items increases 
The number of ex executions increases. The number of executions increases dramatically as the number of targeted items increases. In other words, many nodes are accessed. The result was expected some, to some extent, but there is a slight question. In this time, in this system, we use the reactive API, which allows a synchronous parallel execution of upgraded queries to node. The question was, even if the number of reference node increases, if the load is uniform, would it make such a big difference? Of course, this may be one of the reasons, but uh, there could be some other problem. We uh, set another hypothesis, and we were looking at this from the perspective of what is happening to each user. But now let's consider the behavior of multiple users. Let's assume that information is distributed like this. Again, user X is targeted with items A and B, and in this case, since both A and B are in node 1. We only need to refer to node 1. Next, for user Y, items A and F are targeted. In this case, node 1 and node 3 need to be referenced. Finally, user Z is targeted items B and D. In this case, we needed to refer to node 1 So uh, and node 2. At first, glance, this looks exactly like what we just know. What is noteworthy is that the consideration of accesses to node 1 happens. And although this is an extreme example, the number of commands node is probably uneven because of the, its imbalance. To summarize the problem, there's a two problems. The first one is explosion of the MJET. And then as a result of the increase in the number of recommended contents, the numbers of the targeted contents per user has increased. As a result, the number of nodes to be referred to increased, and the resulting that uh, internally increased increasing the MGET commands. And the second one is that there is a hit contents. And in the case that recommended for the, uh, the large number of the users, access to a certain node will be concentrated. And we believe that these first and second problems affected to each other and made the situation worse. We came up with the solutions for each one. And the first is that the impact of the increase in MGET. And from a system perspectives, as increasing the number of items acquired by the fetch targeting refers, and then the increasing the number of the nodes referred by the fetch information, and the information, uh, the reds, has more other uh, loads. And how can we solve this? And uh, using the limit, and then narrow down the numbers of the cases. However, uh, it's a, it will be the waste to uh, simply the, the limit. So instead of doing that, and we wondered, uh, is there any more efficient ways? So we repeat that the process in general, in fact, this kind of, the process of applying some kind of the filtering already exists. and then, uh, it was done before the ranking process. The ranking is a phase of an estimation using the machine learning models, and it's a pretty heavy process. So we do that before that ranking. And in the filtering process, there is a various conditions. For example, information that has already been seen once is removed. Negative feedback from the users, which um, can be done by pressing the runners, uh, the prohibited symbol, at the, uh, the upper right corners. Uh, it's temporarily excluded if we use that, and as uh, it has a low uh, p probability of being selected. A close examination of uh, this filtering process again shows that. To begin with that, uh, what can be filtered with the, uh, the targeting information? And then also, or some things cannot be filtered out without uh, looking into the uh, contents, I noticed. And therefore, uh, then, uh, except the filter being uh, applied uh, should be extracted and bring it before the fetch information would be more efficient. And filters uh, on the information are moved back to these positions and be able to reduce the numbers of unnecessary queries. However, uh, we will keep that the limit for the safety. And the next, let's uh, think about that limit. And there are various uh, the types of the recommendations. And there are two um, main types of the recommendations we deal with and which refer in the accuracy. And we have, uh, therefore, decided to classify them into two groups. Tier 1 is recommendation made uh, based on the, the result of the user's past actions or behaviors. A simple example would be that a new line step that uh, the user bought in the past has just been released, or a new issue of the manga that the uh, user has bought in the past has just been released. And the tier 2 is a recommendation based on the user uh, attributes and the other uh, factors. Uh, the user may be interested in this, and those contents are included, and therefore, the recommended accuracy will be uh, the lower. And in this case, uh, if the, uh, and then the tier should be uh, taking account at the time uh, when we e e e selecting the uh, entry in case, and that would be good. And in tier 2, 
uh, tier one, and there's the three items, tier two, there's the six items, and selecting the the five in, the, um, in cases. And uh, uh, in case of the three tiers, and uh, uh, tier one, uh, which is less than the five, and so select uh, them all. And uh, and you can still uh, choose two, and so choose two at the random from the tier two. And the choice for tier two is a random, so the uh, candidates will be changed uh, every time you try it. And uh, let's take another situation, and the number of limits is not uh, the same as before, but uh, suppose that you have the uh, tier one and the six of them, and uh, five cases are randomly talking, taking from the tier one, and that makes it, it looks like uh, quite a uh, few. Uh, not selected, but the actual si the system is rarely so limited, because uh, and it's uh, no, uh, 50 or so. Nevertheless, uh, it, uh, it is adapted for the safety devices to stabilize the system, and uh, this was one uh, the measure of the first problems. And next one, and uh, the problem was that uh, all the users refer to the node one, and access is concentrated. And the s simple solutions for this, and in the uh, information, and that's acquired in application memory and can be cached. And uh, let's take a look at the behavior. And the first, the user X access to the site, and then item A and B is uh, targeted. And so the, uh, uh, we fetch them uh, from the node one and cache them in uh, memory. And user Y item A. A and item F is a targeted. Item A is in the cache, and therefore we use that, and then from the node 3 to get the item F and cache it. And at the end, use that's it. And since item B and D are targeted, and item B in cache, and item D only, it can be fetched. And from the node 2, we get that, and then uh, uh, we cache it. And then, how about this? And uh, we only need to access to each uh, node. And on memory cache is used uh, Java's caffeine library. And cache time is as uh, short as possible, only, e e only five se uh, seconds, because we want to keep it uh, information fresh as possible. And the cache is not infinite, and um, uh, the least used times are discarded. And uh, we use the default in the caffeine. And this is only the shimmer and the four. Uh, I, I wrote this in the, uh, for the convenience. And however, what was the effect? And you probably want to know. And then, and uh, there was a great uh, effect here. And uh, this is a graph as a result. And at peak time, cache heat rate was 90% and very eff effective that you can see. And I think that uh, maybe we should have done this from the uh, very, very beginning. But the release itself, uh, we are using that as a uh, radius. And we were using as a cache. And also, that was pretty fast, so high speed. So uh, it was a bit spoiled. And uh, uh, that was something to do with my design. And I regret that. And now, the result of the measures, how was it? And uh, 99. 0.9 percentiles, and uh, uh, from the uh, 352 uh, second returned in uh, 67 millisecond, 80 percent faster. And the original one was very slow. And um, however, uh, this is a uh, uh, traffic, and then with the uh, 67 millisecond with the 39, and that's great. I think um, to tell the truth, and beside this, and uh, well, there is a refactoring process and the prioritization of the process. Uh, probably that uh, was one of the countermeasures. And however, the bottleneck was that there's something that I have discussed in the four. Uh, please forgive me. Now, another one that I would like to introduce you, and that is going to be slightly different types. And this is earthquake, as you see, and in Japan, especially Kanto area. And uh, there's many uh, the great uh, the earthquakes recently, and you probably remember that. And uh, today I would like to talk about the, the magnetics, uh, 5.9 uh, earthquake that hit uh, the northern part of the Chiba prefecture at the 10:41 uh, uh, p.m. on October 7th, in 2021. I live relatively close to the uh, epicenter in Tokyo, and I remember uh, it was quite big uh, the tremor. And what happened during this earthquake was the earthquake was uh, spiked. And the number was uh, 120,000 requests per second. It was a big earthquake, so people um, must have uh, been messaging to the uh, family or friends on lines. And uh, we're quite happy that uh, people use the lines. And however, uh, for the smart channel, it is an unexpected uh, phenomenon. And as a result, application server threat, and as you see here, was uh, the cap. And then uh, one of the requests uh, cannot be received. And 120,000 requests per second. and uh, it, Looks like it's not that big. However, at that time, it was pretty big because the 10 minutes current to cash and that's 70,000 RPS. And that was the assumption. And, and, and it was uh, exclu uh, it was above that. And so we never thought about it. And then what's setting the values, such as the cash time, uh, temporarily changed to recover. I tried, but it took like uh, 30 minutes to settle in, as you see here. 
And in terms of the third super kind of effect that we got, and uh, we were originally going to send you the banner like this, announcing that there's an earthquake. And we were able to do this for one of the requests. However, the application server was clogged, and therefore, uh, there was an error banner in some of the cases. The result was both uh, the uh, uh, frustrating and uh, apologies for uh, the uh, other people because the line uh, has a special attachment to the air uh, disasters and it's a bit uh, old solid. The line was born in uh, 2011 and in that year uh, there was a major disaster. Yes, the, uh, the Great Earth uh, East Japan earthquake happened and I was working in the office at the time and was affected by the earthquake. Unfortunately, uh, there was no one uh, injured around me and I was, uh, one line was down and another train was stopped. And then I didn't know whether a family and friends are uh, safe or not. Unfortunately, I was able to uh, communicate to the, uh, uh, through the internet for some of the people, but my, my mother doesn't use the internet, so I was not be able to connect it to them for a while. And therefore, uh, based on that experience, they wanted to create that chat app so that you would be able to use it for this kind of case. And that was a chat application, smart channel as well. And, uh, they have to be prioritized to provide the disaster information uh, top of everything. And uh, there is a, a special uh, the distribution of the ways. However, it did not work. And uh, that is and prioritize deliberately. That's what it is. And uh, about that, the certain uh, the level of the disasters and at the very beginning, and that the information is going to be uh, processed. So the, it's not the complicated. It's not the... Uh, and so that is going to be a very late process and be able to return the information. And uh, up until now, uh, we have used this for the uh, great earthquake. Why it didn't happen in this case? And, and because that uh, in order to come into the prioritization uh, delivery, and there's some conditions, and, and the, uh, uh, there's a seismic at the levels, and above the six in Japan, that was the criteria. And however, in this case, it was above the five, and the four, it was excluded from that range. And then the earthquake of intensity five up on the Japanese seismic intensity scale uh, according to country regions. And but uh, since it was the first time, and the four, it was since the, uh, the system was created, and therefore it did not work. But there is a countermeasure. So we made some uh, changes. So we increased the number of servers from 25 to 50 in in preparation for the uh, unexpected, unexpected peak traffic. And it was also for in preparation for the disaster other than earthquake. And we also changed the threshold for a private as delivery. We thought earthquake uh, scale five is worthy of a priority uh, delivery since such many people reacted to it. So we did not see the result of our measures for a while. Fortunately, no major earthquake occurred. However, at the 23, uh, 36, 23 hours of 36 minutes on March 16, 2022, an earthquake of magnitude 7.3 occurred off the coast of Fukushima Prefecture. The magnitude of the earthquake in Fukushima Prefecture was 6. Priority delivery will be applied. I remember this earthquake well. The Tokyo had a, uh, was quite shaken. So the uh, the traffic peak at the time was a. Uh, uh, 105,000 RPS. This is a little less than the last time, but it is a still a big number. And response time for 99.9 .9 uh, was 88 milliseconds, although a little slower. This doesn't seem to be a problem on this scale. I also checked the MGET times of the radius. It was a 367 microsecond. The load in the area is low. The reason for this low load may be uh, due to the cast that was introduced in the previous trouble. So this time there was no major problems and I was able to send out a flash news of the earthquake this time. I was a bit relieved. However, uh, you know, another unexpected problem happened. Uh, I had power failure at my home, and I worried about the server when earthquake happened after shake subsided. I opened PC, which was laptop, so it was okay, but the router didn't come up. So uh, Wi-Fi died. I asked another team member uh, to check the server. And I used candlelight and uh, tethering to do my work, which was a difficult. Uh, so, uh, you know, be prepared and the candle will come very handy. So the last part, I'd like to talk about the lesson learned through the troubles. And first, 
the service design. It may seem obvious, but it is easier to deal with problems when they occur if the system requirements are assumed to be as numerical. And in this case, we had the assumption of a peak traffic and the simulation at the time of a cache. And this was very useful when deciding what to do in case of a problem. And it will be helpful when creating a new features, new services. It may be difficult to make assumptions for a new service, but I think it is a good idea to prepare for it, even if it's just a, a familiar estimation or some kind of imagination. You can update it after the service is actually in operation. And But it is difficult to anticipate all the possible errors, and there are cases where some kind of trouble may occur. It is sometimes helpful to be able to quickly adjust settings in preparation for such situation. In fact, there are many other uh, parameters that can be adjusted, such as a uh, uh, late limiter and uh, circuit breaker, uh, which can be used in various places. It is best not to make errors, but it is always a good idea to have something in place in case you fall. And sometimes the growth of the service itself can be a cause of a trouble. It is best to check and correct the uh, metrics frequently, but even if you are able to do so immediately after the start of the service, however, as time goes by, problems such as these may appear when they are inadvertently overlooked. It would be ideal if this problem could be uh, monitored mechan mechanically and alerted before they become a problem. In this project, uh, two anomaly detected set in various ways. So now that next, uh, let's talk about when trouble actually happens. When a problem occurs, you can rely on the logs and the system metrics. However, it is not until the problem occurs that you may think, oh, I should have saved this data. And when I talked about the latest trouble in my presentation, it may seem that it was easy to identify the problem. But in fact, it took almost a month to solve the problem. And we added some logs and the metrics to identify the problem. If they are not enough, we, uh, you know, we repeat hypothesis and the verification. It may be necessary to add a metrics to verify the hypothesis and actually verifying the hypothesis may be another uh, tedious work, maybe a rather tedious work. Third, the progress of technology is very impressive. Things that were difficult to do in the past can be done easily and uh, stably with a modern technology midway and libraries. Library, I feel that every day. However, on the other hand, new technologies have other difficulties, and I sometimes wonder how to solve them. The same is true for the distributed environment, parallel processing, and asynchronous processing. It may be give you a headache. It is not easy to say if you do use this, you'll be safe. We engineers always face such a difficulty. The reason we chose troubles as our theme this time is that we hope it will be helpful as an example. Uh, well, what I'm trying to say is that the failure is inevitable. That's my excuse. So, uh, you know, it's better not to finish with that excuse. So I was looking for some good quotes about a failure, and I found one that, that made a deep impression on me. So I have never failed. I have only found 10,000 ways it could go wrong. This is a quote from Tobin's Edison. I like it. I wish I could be this open-minded and make the most, most of my daily failures. As someone who learned to appreciate light bulbs during the blackout, I feel that the Edison words are like fate. So I thought I would share them with you. So this concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Mr. Watanabe, thank you very much. And from here, I would like to the interviewer, and we would like to deep down the contents of the sessions with the interviewer. And then also the audience, you'll be able to answer the questions. And if you have questions in the case, uh, from the question mark in the screens, which is at the bottom, of the screens, and please put the questions. And the uh, interviewer from Yapu, Japan, uh, Mr. Takamori Kanai. And uh, Kanai san, please introduce yourself. Thank you. And uh, I am in charge of the uh, recommended type of the uh, uh, delivery system uh, the development, and my name is Kanai. Nice to meet you. Now, Kanai san, now what is your questions? What do you want to know through this session? Thank you very much for your presentation. And for the users, 
there's so many other services, you get the uh, variable contents, and you will recommend it, that, and that kind of a system. And then also, there are 70,000 uh, uh, over that uh, numbers, and uh, in total. And uh, I have done that. Uh, uh, high traffic AI development, I am doing this in terms of the numbers, and that was uh, quite impressive. And therefore, there are several other uh, questions uh, I was quite interested in. Please, go ahead. And the first question, now, now, there is for a large number of the requests and the information, which is the contents data, and with the batch process, and you will do the update and caching, and that's what you have uh, described. And in probably the uh, user recommend uh, for the targeting, and uh, periodically you will update, I think, and uh, specifically, and uh, what timing do you do that? And uh, what is the uh, interval of the updating, uh, may I ask? Yes, uh, for this service, there's so many, from the many other services, we received the uh, recommended data. And with this service and the configuration, the settings can be flexibly changed. And uh, for the services, and once uh, 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 once a day, recommendations, or the, uh, in case of the uh, fresh contents, it's needed in the case news. And uh, every time and they will send it, and at a real time basis, uh, they deliver in some cases. So there's a different uh, the timing that they will send the contents. Thank you very much. So like uh, news is sent every day. So that means every time, like uh, to the 160 million users, are you updating the targeting to all those users? Is the timing is, I mean, different between the news from Japan and from the other countries like uh, Thai and uh, Taiwan, because the organization, I mean, teams are different. So recommendation timing is different. But uh, basically, once every hour, you know, to the users, may not be at all the users, but, uh, you know, there are quite a few users who are interested in the news. So uh, we updated all those users. Awesome. Next question, uh, regarding the radius and after release, and I'm get a uh, uh, multiple node uh, request and the latency was deteriorated, and that's what you have mentioned. And with the filter out all memory cache, and uh, uh, you were able to reduce the load. And that was a solution. And uh, as of now, it's been released with some uh, kind of systems, and the latency was deteriorated when it happens. And in terms of the countermeasures, what would that be? The, uh, well, the system is operated, and uh, uh, have you actually done countermeasures, or the service was done at once? And that is a question. How did you do that? And for this uh, real-time uh, basis, uh, it is uh, uh, operated, and we have updated. Well, that. Thank you very much. Oh, so that means, so you spent about a month to fix the problem, right? So during the month, so you are like maintaining, like a, a gradually increasing latency. Oh yeah, oh, what we introduced this time is just a part of the uh, measures that we took, but we had some ad hoc uh, measures like a workaround gradually, we did so. And then uh, the, in the end, we used this uh, measure after a month, but uh, in because ad hoc measures couldn't solve the um, root cause, and so therefore we finally uh, came to this method to solve. At that time, uh, what was the size of the uh, the team members? What is the CR department? My team, engineering. Uh, there is a five, including myself. And for this particular problem, and uh, suddenly it, it happens, and therefore not all of the people will be able to involve in this, and mainly uh, the two members that we have selected, and that's exclusive members, two people. Thank you. Next is, like it is relating to the system that I'm working on, so that's why I want to ask you this. So against this system requirements, the load to the information radius uh, uh, will remain be an uh, issue. So the uh, if going forward the number of the recommended co uh, recommend number of the recommendation increases or the items increased increases, then that the, you will face the similar issues, right? So do you have any like a countermeasure or mitigation plan that you are already planning? 
is exactly this is exactly what we've been uh, you know having a, a headache on. Like uh, you know, load as well, but then the purity, the capacity is getting short. Now, uh, ready, there are 96 ladies cluster node, and the line is using the ladies cluster on a Delta system and the manage there. But the, this, these 96 nodes is the max number, and uh, of course you can expand it in further. But then to do so that you have to check the, uh, you know, whether it functions or whether that the traffic can be actually sold out based on the types of the traffic. And so, so we have an issue with what we'll do, uh, you know, after 96 nodes. And are we going to go for the 192 nodes and to test them? And then if it's not enough, then are we going to double it again? And so this is the issue. So because uh, this time we introduced the two troubles, and then uh, I thought of uh, talking about that issue as a third point, but uh, for the sake of time, we didn't do that today. So so from 96 to uh, 90, 192 or 364, if, you know, every time you increase, you have to test it, So which requires a lot of effort. So we don't really want to do that. So. Uh, because some by users, the you nodes know, to be looked at, it looked at is fixed. So so it's okay to be distributed to uh, multiple clusters. So so we have actually we have set up uh, multiple latest clusters. We we used to have a ninety six nodes, but then this these ninety six uh, nodes uh, we have a uh, six of uh, ninety six nodes. So uh, we have uh, 576 nodes in total, so th which is very scalable. So if the traffic is too tight or if the data is too much, then uh, we can add the cluster. So this is like a muscle approach. And uh, that is cluster itself. According to the official node, you know, could have up to uh, 1,000 nodes. But uh, in a column, so, uh, uh, the actually a few hundred uh, only a few hundred nodes were actually tested but you know anything beyond that will be very hard to test so so we decided to split the clusters thank you very much i learned a lot thank you so the questions from the audience Cost engineering, something like a cost engineering for unexpected trouble, countermeasures, or the uh, operations. Is there anything that uh, you are prepared? Uh, yes, that is a good uh, question. And cost engineering, like uh, there was a presentation yesterday, I was actually watching that, and we would like to do that, however. In order to do so, preparation is needed and it's pretty tough. And therefore, we would like to think about it for the future, not just a recommendation, however, uh, in earthquake or the disaster information. And that needs to be delivered in a proper manner. And therefore, cost engineering is needed and also for the mental lesions that we have to cope with that. And that's something that uh, we have in mind for the future. However, we have not done yet. Thank you. Well, we are running out of time, so last question. So regarding the uh, initiatives, I want to ask you this question for the, the as a recommended patterns, like in case of app, like a current location or the local information can be used for the recommendation, right? So have you looked into the possibility to use those data? Well, this, this system uses the client cache currently and once every five minutes or so, it is updated. So the uh, location-based contents is, is interesting, but it could be very difficult because it is meaningful only when the user is right there. So it has to be real time. So we are we have we are actually building that kind of a system, but then we haven't to get to the point to uh, obtain the contents here. So it is the. Uh, issue that we have to tackle. So that earthquake, you, you have to catch the uh, story of the earthquake. 
So the line server says that the earthquake happened and so then get the information. So which is an event driven type of update. That's what we are doing. So you, if we use that real time update method. So when you go, when the user go to the restaurant, you can issue some kind of coupon or within the line. There are some, uh, you know, companies accounts. So uh, maybe we can uh, get, we can issue the coupons from them or something based on the looking for information. Maybe next year or so. I'm not quite sure yet. Thank you very much.